So, hello, hello again. Ako na naman. Si Teacher Caitlin. At nagbabalik na naman sa panibagong topic na i-discuss natin. And yung topic natin for today is Ecosystem, Tropical Rainforests, Coral Reefs, and Mangrove Swamps. So, about ecosystem, ang pag-uusapan natin natin ngayon. So, what is ecosystem? So, sabi sa slide, it is an environment where both living living and non-living things exist and interact with one another. This interaction enables the survival of living things and affects non-living things. So, sabi dito is basta may isang environment na both my living things and non-living things. So, ano nga ba ang example ng ecosystem? So, one example of ecosystem is the tropical rainforest. So, sa rainforest, may mga living things and non-living things doon. So, one example of non-living things doon is yung mga soil, yung water, yung air, yung sunlight, and Sabi dito is yung humidity and syempre hindi mawawala ang living things sa rainforest kasi doon nagsiste yung mga animals like birds, um, ano ba, ano ba ba, gorillas maybe, um, basta yung mga wild animals is nandun sa rainforest. Bees, worms, ano pa ba, mm, butterflies, dragonflies. O, wala naman siguro dogs. <laughs> uh, maybe bears. Uh, polar. No, hindi po. Bears. So. So, rainforest has different layers. Namely, emergent layer, canopy layer, understory layer, and the forest floor. So, yung emergent layer refers to the trees that are 130 to 180 feet tall. And yung canopy um, is has tall slender trees from a dense platform of vege- vegetation with 60 to 129 feet of the ground. And yung understory is about 59 feet and below and consists of trunks, of canopy, shrubs, trees, and small plants. So, mas medyo mababang trees na to. And yung forest floor is the home to the animals like jaguars, tigers, and cassowaries which thrive in a deep shade part of the forest where plant life is thin. So, yung forest floor is yung pinakababa na like yung ground ng forest. So, this is because only a small percent of sunlight gets through the thick canopy and understory and reaches the forest floor. So, organisms like fungi, insects, worms, and litter from taller trees that fall on the forest floor can be found here. So, ayun. Insects. Uh, makikita mong mga insects, worm sa forest floor. And dun rin na tumitira yung mga animals. So, so dito yung emergent is yung pinaka-tall. And next is the canopy and then the understory. Tapos yung forest floor is like just um yung ground lang. As in yung damo-damo na lang kanon. So, next. So, in the first picture, makikita natin yung food chain. And my producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and decomposer. And yung food web is just the combination of the food chain. Like, maraming food chain, ganon. So, sabi dito is, 
Producers provide food for the consumers which include herbivores, plant-eating animals, and carnivores, flesh-eating animals. Herbivores provide food to the carnivores. Producers include trees, shrubs, and other plant life in the forest. So, one example. Sa picture is yung plant which is a producer. Tapos kinakain ng mga worm yung plant. And then yung chicken kinakain yung worm. And then yung snake kinakain yung chicken. And pag namatay yung snake, ang kakain naman sa snake is yung mga fungi. Tapos pag namatay yung fungi, magde-decompose and kakainin ulit ng plant. Ganon. Like yun yung food chain, yung um, cycle ng food chain. And sa feeding relations, like food chain and food web occur among species in the forest ecosystem. So, itong food chain and food web uh, always happens sa mga forests kasi um, wide, like maraming animals ang nakatira doon. So, may uh, predation, commensalism, mutualism na nangyayari. Mostly is predation kasi nga for survival, kailangan nilang mabuhay. So, kaka- kakain sila ng kapwa nilang animals. Like, the chicken, kakainin niya yung worm, yung snake, kakainin niya yung chicken, ganun. So, food chain starts with producer, a series of consumers and decomposers. Food web results from the interconnected food chains. Oh, so, yung food web is maraming food chains lang. So, next, So, interactions among organisms in an ecosystem. So, commensalism. Uh, commensalism is an interaction where organisms live together without harming one another. So, both is benefited. And, for example, is orchids that are attached to the trunk of a tree. So, dito, yung orchids na naka-attach to the tree is wala naman siyang ginagawang masama. And yung tree, wala namang ginagawang masama. So, both are benefited. And so, commensalism is the interaction between the organisms. So, yung orchids is may titirhan. And yung trunk naman is may gagamit sa trunk. Kaya, benefited silang dalawa. Or like, the tree is not unaffected or benefited like wala lang so commensalism pa rin like at least hindi basta basta without harming one another walang naharm and so second is mutualism both organisms benefit in the relationship so one example is a bee or a butterfly suck nectar from a flower and the flower reproduces so from this yung butterfly is benefited from the nectar and yung flower naman is benefited from the bee and butterflies kasi nag reproduce yung mga flowers like dumadami sila because of bees and butterflies. And so, yung third is competition, an interaction wherein organisms compete, compete for survival. So, one example of this is yung mga grass shrubs, flowers, and trees that grow together in one area where they compete for source of food, sunlight, soil, nutrients, and other things needed for their survival. So, dahil maraming mga plants ang nandun, certain um, marami silang nag-aagawan sa mga sa food, sunlight, and soil nutrients. Kaya, um, mahirap silang mabuhay na marami. Aha. Ayun. Di ba syempre marami sila? So, grass, shrubs, flowers, and trees. So, bale, mag-aagawan sila sa food, sa food and soil nutrients. Kaya, parang matira-matibay na lang ganun. So, number four is predation, an interaction in which one organism kills smaller organisms for food. So, one example of this is 
when a snake eats a rat for food. So, predators are usually organisms which are stronger, bigger, and fiercer compared to the prey. So, dahil mas malaki naman talaga ang snake, syempre kakainan niya yung rat, di ba? So, ayun, predation. Basta, basta may mamamatay na animal. Like, nakakain. Predation, yun. O, oh, ecosystem. Or, coral reefs ecosystem. Hmm. Yes, it is. So, coral reefs are one example also of ecosystem. Hindi lang tropical rainforest. Kasi sa coral reefs, uh, it is composed of non-living things and living things. So, the living part composed of different species like fish, seagrass, corals, fungus, and other marine animals. And yung non-living things is yung water and oxygen and rocks. So, ecosystem again. And coral reefs. So, ano nga ba ang coral reefs? Coral reefs serve as habitat for many animals. They are a breeding ground of marine life. It is composed of non-living components such as water and sand and living components such as fish, crustaceans, mollusks, cnidarians, sponges, and echinoderms. So, producers like seagrass provide food and nutrients to the consumers, which are the sea turtles, crabs, fishes, and other marine animals. So, syempre, yung producers natin, so, diba, in an ecosystem, may food chain and food web. And so, dito sa coral reefs, yung food chain dito is that yung producers is yung mga seagrass and yung consumers are the marine animals like fishes, sea turtles, jellyfish, crabs, and marami pa dolphin, ano, sharks, ganun. So, basta producers is the seagrass and consumers yung mga marine animals sa sea. And kung pag-uusapan naman yung food web, uh, syempre, yung mga small fish, kakainin nila yung mga seagrass. And then, may mga big fish kung saan kakainin nila yung mga small fishes. So, may food web na nangyayari with certain animals and food chain na nangyayari. So, sabi dito, the factors that contribute to the coral reef formation are temperature, light penetration, stable salinity, and water movement. So, there are different categories of coral reefs. Fringing reefs are reefs that hug the shore of continents or islands. Barrier reefs, reefs are reefs that stand between the open sea and a lagoon. And coral atolls are reefs that enclose a lagoon. So, yun yung mga different categories of coral reefs. Mm, so, sa coral reefs, ano yung mga examples ng commensalism, mutualism, and others? So, sa commensalism in a coral reef ecosystem, uh, example is barnacles attached on skin of turtles. So, barnacles are benefited while the host is not harmed kasi hindi naman nakaharm yung turtles sa mga barnacles. And yung mga barnacles yung nabe-benefit. Kasi nag, may nagsistayan sila. And wala namang nangyayari sa turtle kaya it's a commensalism. Walang nakaharm na organisms. And sa mutualism naman in a coral reef ecosystem is the corals receive oxygen from the algae and the algae get protection from them. So yung corals is nabubuhay dahil sa oxygen from the algae and yung algae naman is nakakuha ng protection from the corals. So mutualism. Both organisms benefit in the relationship. Yung third naman is competition. So, one example 
ng competition sa coral reef ecosystem is yung mga fishes compete for source of food and space in the coral reef. So, syempre, dahil marami fishes sa mga oceans, may competition na nangyayari para mag-survive and para makakuha ng source of food and space sa coral reefs kasi nga marami sila. So, kailangan mag-unahan, may competition. And sa predation naman in coral reef ecosystem is when a big fish eats a small fish. So, yung predator is the big fish na nabe-benefit and the prey is the small fish kasi yung small fish yung namatay. So, siya yung prey and the predator is the big fish. So, may predation na nangyayari kasi may kumakain sa mga small fishes. So, may nadagdag na interaction which is the parasitism. And this is a kind of interaction where one organism, the parasite, depends on another organisms for food production and reproduction. So, dito sa parasitism is nabibenefit basta parang nasa inside ka ng host. Like nasa inside ka ng isang animal. So, one example of this is when a worm lives in the guts and flesh of a fish. The worm is benefited while the fish is harmed by the parasite. So, basta parasitism, nasa loob ka ng isang animal. So, example na, na sinabi ko kanina is yung worm kasi nasa loob siya ng guts and flesh of a fish. And so, syempre yung worm, kinakain niya yung mga kinakain ng fish, like yung nutrients na nakukuha ng fish sa mga kinakain niya na producers, kinakain yun ng worm instead na kinakain ng fish kaya nakaharm yung fish. So, may parasitism na nangyayari. And next, so, how about mangrove swamps? Are they ecosystem? Well, Yes, because may non-living things and living things na nag interact ulit dito sa environment na to. And so, different species of animals like crustaceans, fish, and mollusk compose the living part and of mangrove ecosystem. And yung non-living part ulit is the water and soil, air, ganon. So, mangrove plants are the main organism that dominates this ecosystem. Malamak kasi mangrove. Swamps, di ba? Mangrove. So, mangrove swamp ecosystem is composed mostly of mangrove plants and animals like crustaceans and migratory birds. So, as I said before, the non-living thing part composed of water, sand, mud, rocks, and sunlight. It is an important system that allows for the breeding of fishes and survival of other marine lives. It is also a part of the coastal and marine ecosystem. And next. So, one example of commensalism sa mangrove swamp ecosystem is um, just like when a barnacles and oysters attach themselves to the roots of mangroves. So, fishes stay in the mangroves during a particular stage of their life to grow and develop into a mature fish. So, parang yung kanina sa coral reefs, yung barnacles are naka-attach sa roots ng mangroves and hindi naman naka-harm yung mangroves. So, it's a commensalism kasi walang naka-harm. Hindi naman namamatay yung mga mangroves kung may barnacles and oysters kaya safe naman and it's so, ito ay example ng commensalism. And sa mutualism naman in mangrove swamp ecosystem is yung crabs and mollusks help break down. So, one example is crabs and mollusks help break down plant later in a mangrove ecosystem through grazing. So, yung mga crabs and mollusks yung kumakain sa mga liter ng plants 
sa ecosystem ng mangrove by grazing. Like, parang kinakat nila and then kinakain, maybe. And so, syempre na benefit yung mangrove ecosystem kasi nalilinis yung water and mas malinis yung water. And mas healthy, syempre, yung mga mangroves. And yung crops is may kakainin. So, both ni tourism kasi nabibenefit silang dalawa. And next is predation. So, dito may predation rin na nangyayari sa mangrove sub ecosystem. Uh, so, one example of this is when a white heron or tagak eat fishes. So, I think wait. So, I think white heron is a bird and it's like the kanaway, parang kanaway ti langana pero I'm not sure if it's a white heron. So, dito yung predator is yung bird which is the white heron and yung prey is yung kinakain yung mga fish. So, predation yun kasi may namamatay. And so, what are the importance of mangrove swamps? So, first, they serve as breeding and nesting grounds of animals, of animal species. Also, they are used as shelter by fishes, as breeding and nursing grounds before heading to the open ocean. So, parang mag-shelter muna sila dyan sa mga mangroves and then pupunta na sila sa ocean na free kasi doon the open ocean and then mangrove swamps are habitat of organisms where many animals find protection and abundant food in this environment so yung mangrove swamps yung nagpro-provide ng food sa mga marine animals like crabs fish and others pa <laughs> And yung mangrove swamp rin yung nagpro-protect sa mga organisms. Also, it acts as a natural barrier and flood defense as they defend coastlines from flooding and erosion. Also, pag may mga um, tsunami na nangyayari sa seas, pinaprevent ng mangroves na mangyari or na malakas yung impact, like linelesen na yung impact. Kaya, masasabing natural barrier and flood defense. And yung erosion rin sa mga seas and rivers. Seas. <laughs> and lastly, it is an important source of livelihood of people living in coastal areas. Uh, may mga nagbebenta ng mangroves and maybe it's their job na parang alagaan na yung mga mangroves dun sa coastal areas nila so it's a win-win situation na may benefit yung mga tao and na may benefit rin yung mga animals so ayan lang thank you for listening bye bye again guys see you I think next next week or let or uh, I don't know okay I hope na may mga natutunan kayo sa akin kahit ganito na yung boses ko. Hey, bye-bye.